ask for a roll call. Councilmember Abdelgawad. Here. Councilmember Barber. Present. Councilmember Burke. Present. Councilmember Holman. Present. Councilmember Hubach. Present. Councilmember Kellogg. Present. Councilmember Moorhead. Present. Councilmember Stevens. Present. Mayor Kirkhoff. I'm here. We do have a quorum. If everybody please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance. We have uh, one item of new business declaring the April 5th, 2016 election results, Bill 3158. Can we have a reading, please? The first reading of Bill 3158 by title only, an ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, declaring the results of the April 5th, 2016 election and declaring this bill as an emergency. I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 3158 for declaring the April 5th, 2016 election results. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Motion passes unanimously. We have the second reading. The second reading of Bill 3158 in its entirety. An ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, declaring the results of the April 5th, 2016 election and declaring this bill as an emergency. Whereas a general municipal election was held on April 5th, 2016, and whereas section 9.3 of the Raymore City Charter calls for the council to declare the election results at the next regularly scheduled meeting, council meeting following the election. Now therefore be it ordained by the council of the city of Raymore, Missouri as follows. Section one, it is hereby found and determined by a canvas of the votes by the city council of the city of Raymore, Missouri at the election held on April 5th, 2016 in conformity with the Comprehensive Election Act of 1977, revised statutes of Missouri, the provisions of the charter and ordinances of the city of Raymore, Missouri as follows. Mayor, three-year term, candidate, Christopher P. Turnbow, total votes received, 2022. Candidate Peter Kirkhoff, total votes received, 773. The City Council does find that Christopher P. Turnbow is the candidate for mayor who received the highest number of votes and shall hold the office for a three-year term until a successor is duly elected or appointed and qualified according to law. Council member from Ward 1, two-year term. Candidate Jeffrey L. Stevens, total votes received 537. The City Council does find that Jeffrey L. Stevens is the candidate for council member from Ward 1 who received the highest number of votes and shall hold the office for a two-year term until his successor is duly elected or appointed and qualified according to law. Council member from Ward 2, two-year term, candidate Derek Moorhead, total votes received, 645. The City Council does find that Derek Moorhead is the candidate for council member from Ward 2 who received the highest number of votes and shall hold the office for a two-year term until a successor is duly elected or appointed and qualified according to law. Council member from Ward 3, two-year term, candidate J.D. Holman, total vote, votes received 672. The City Council does find that J.D. Holman is the candidate for council member from Ward 3, who received the highest number of votes and shall hold the office for a two-year term until a successor is duly elected or appointed and qualified according to law. Council member from Ward 4, two-year term, candidate Sonia Abdelgawad, total votes received 496. The City Council does find that Sonia Abdelgawad is the candidate for council member from Ward 4 who received the highest number of votes and shall hold the office for a two-year term until a successor is duly elected or appointed and qualified according to law. Section 2, it is further found, declared, and determined that notice of said election was duly given and published in the manner provided by law and that said election was held and conducted in all respects in conformity with the Constitution and laws of the State of Missouri governing elections and subject to provisions for charter cities. Section th three, severability. If any section, subsection, sentence, clause, phrase, or portion of this ordinance is for any reason held invalid or unconstitutional by any court of competent jurisdiction such portion shall be deemed a separate, distinct, and independent provision, and such holding shall not affect the validity of the remaining portions thereof. Section 4, Emergency Reading. This bill is declared and authorized as an emergency and will be read in its entirety pr to promote the administration of government 
and permit the new, newly elected officials to begin their terms. Section 5, effective date. The effective date and approval of this ordinance shall be coincidental with the mayor's signature and attestation by the city clerk. <coughs> Duly read this first time this 11th day of April 2016. Be it remembered that the above ordinance was approved and adopted this 11th day of April 2016 by the following vote. I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 3158, declaring April the April 5th, 2016 election results. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Motion passes unanimously. Mayor, I would ask Councilmember Stevens, Councilmember Moorhead, Councilmember Holman, and Councilmember Abdelgawad to join me at the podium for your oath of, oath of office, please. better pictures for the <laughs> you'll raise your right hand and repeat after me I state your name do solemnly swear I possess the qualifications prescribed by law for the office to which I have been elected and that I will support the Constitution of the United States and of the state of Missouri affecting charter cities and all ordinances of the city of Raymore and that I will faithfully discharge my official duties in the office of council member for which I have been elected. Congratulations. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Christopher Paul Turnbow. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. I possess the qualifications prescribed by law. I possess the qualifications prescribed by law. For the office to which I have been elected. For the office to which I've been elected. And that I will support the Constitution of the United States. And that I will support the Constitution of the United States. And of the state of Missouri affecting charter cities. And of the state of Missouri affecting charter cities. And all ordinances of the city of Raymore. And all ordinances of the city of Raymore. And that I will faithfully discharge my official duties. And that I will faithfully discharge my official duties. In the office of mayor. In the office of mayor. For which I have been elected. For which I have been elected. Cookroft, if could you please join me? <clears throat> Thank you. Um, just a few words before I read the, the small inscription on this plaque, which really doesn't say enough uh, for the work of Peter Kirkhoff. Uh, Pete was uh, first appointed to the Planning and Zoning Commission in 2005, and then shortly thereafter, 
uh, took on the role of city council. And that's when I first met him, really, as police chief here in 2007, and uh, worked well together. We had a great relationship. He was a tremendous supporter of the police department and every other facet of the city. Um, Pete took over uh, in, at a time when we needed um, a quality individual uh, to guide us through some uh, turmoil that was occurring at the time. And he did just that and has led us as the mayor for the last four years. And uh, quite frankly, it was difficult to file against a friend uh, when I did file. But uh, Pete understood and I understood uh, his position as well. He's done uh, a, an extremely good job as mayor. I'm proud to call him a friend. And uh, now I'll just read this inscription that says, Peter Kirkhoff, in appreciation and recognition for your dedicated service and commitment to the city of Raymore, Missouri, as mayor, 2012 to 2016. Thank you, Pete. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'd just like to say it's been a it's been an honor to serve as the mayor. Um, for the past four years. We've uh, got a lot done, got a lot set up, so thank you. I'm not sure they'd planted a whoopee cushion before I got up here. <laughs> um, wow. Gosh. All right, how do you get this thing to scroll? <laughs> Use my wheel. Ah, thank you. Go right here, click this. This will give you the bullet points right here. Ten four. All right. Well, uh, now that the uh, the presentations are over, uh, my first official act is to. Uh, uh, ask for adjournment <laughs> uh, in order for us to move into a short reception and we will resume this meeting at uh, the next the special session at 730 okay mr. Just mayor I move that we adjourn it's a motion motion been made and seconded to adjourn the regular session um, any questions all those in favor say aye oh we don't do that here we raise our hands <laughs> Sorry. it's unanimous passes thank you we are adjourned the uh, Raymore City Council special meeting to order for Monday, April the 11th. Jean, can I have the roll call, please? Councilmember Abdelgawad? Here. Councilmember Barber? Present. Councilmember Burke? Present. Councilmember Holman? Present. Councilmember Hubach? Present. Councilmember Kellogg? Present. Councilmember Moorhead? Present. Councilmember Stevens? Present. Mayor Turnbow? Here. If you'd all please rise, we're going to do the Pledge of Allegiance again, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, uh, tonight's my honor for my first proclamation uh, to present this for National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week. If I could have, please have the Raymore Communications Unit please come forward. I'll slide over here. <laughs> they, you can tell I used to be their boss. They were trying to get behind me. <laughs> 
the, uh, the proclamation tonight is, uh, is a very special one. Um, you missed her. My daughter was here. She's a dispatcher as well uh, for the city of Leewood. And uh, many of these folks here tonight I had the honor of working with through my career as police chief here. And uh, so being able to provide this proclamation tonight means a lot to me. I hope you guys know that. And so I will read it. Whereas when an emergency occurs, seconds count and the prompt response of police officers, firefighters and paramedics is critical to the protection of life and preservation of property. And whereas the safety of our police officers, firefighters and paramedics is dependent upon the skill of our public safety communicators in obtaining accurate information from citizens who contact the Raymore Police Department Communications Center. And whereas public safety telecommunicators are the first and most critical contact our citizens have with emergency services and must be available 24 hours a day. And whereas public safety telecommunicators are a vital link for police officers, firefighters, and paramedics by monitoring their activities by radio, providing them information, and ensuring their safety. And whereas the public safety telecommunicators of the Raymore Police Department have contributed substantially to the overall safety of our community by demonstrating compassion, understanding, and professionalism during the performance of their duties, now therefore I, Christopher P. Turnbow, Mayor of the City of Raymore, Missouri, sorry, I lost pause there. I, didn't, I can't believe I was reading that. Uh, <laughs> do hereby proclaim the week of April 10th through 16th, 2016 as National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week in the city of Raymore in honor of the men and women whose diligence and professionalism keep our city and citizens safe. In witness whereof I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the city of Raymore to be affixed this 11th day of April 2016. Julie, are you accepting on behalf? Yes. There you go. Thank you very much. Um, and this is for National Donate Life Month. Uh, do we have someone here to accept the proclamation? I'm sorry, Ray, what's your last name? Abel? Gable. 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 Okay. Got Mr. Ray Gable with us tonight and Mr. Phil Duncan. Uh, this proclamation is for, um, if you don't know it, is for organ donation. And um, actually, Ray has been the proud recipient of two hearts, not one, two, and as a survivor, and we're happy for that. Sure. Happy to have you here. So is Phil, though, former mayor of Dalton. Our proclamation tonight, though, is to recognize the organization and the good work that it does. So tonight, whereas today more than 122,000 men, women, and children are on the waiting list for an organ transplant, to help them get the care they need, millions of Americans choose to be organ and tissue donors. A decision that reflects not only profound generosity, but also our commitment to one another during National Donate Life Month. We renew the call for organ and tissue donation. And whereas most people can be donors and the need is great, I encourage Americans of every background to learn the facts about organ and tissue donation, consider signing up for their state's registry, and talk to family and friends about their decision information and resources about how to get involved are available at www.mwtn.org and whereas together we can respond to the donor shortage that keeps thousands of patients from getting life-saving care. Let us mark this month by rededicating ourselves to that task, standing with donors and their families and igniting hope for those in need. And now therefore I, Christopher P. Turnbow, Mayor of the City of Raymore, do hereby declare April 2016 as National Donate Life Month and call upon health care professionals, volunteers, educators, government agencies, faith-based and community groups and private organizations to join forces to boost the number of organ and tissue donors throughout our nation. It witness whereof, 
I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the city of Raymore to be affixed this 11th day of April, 2016. Yes, Ray, sir. thank you for being here. Quick presentation to the mayor and congratulations once again. Oh, thank you. Oh, I got to help here. Bit there. Okay. Uh, I'll sit up here. Present the flag to the city, uh, what the city of Raymore has done, nice. and then also I want to thank you for your service, too. I just didn't realize. Do you want to fold that up like we do the <laughs> <paper>? Sure. <No. laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, mayor. Can I say a couple things? You bet, Phil. Go right ahead. You know, I started going to city councils and high schools seven years ago, two years after my transplant. The average p uh, number of people that were signed up in Cass County was less than 30 percent. Well, now it's over 60. It's due to awareness. But the main thing you need to remember, the hero's not me. It's the donor's family, donor families, you see. Somebody lost a loved one, and that's why I'm here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. And the uh, next item under uh, presentations is that Sharon Paris uh, from the council chamber he, art exhibitor, uh, Claire Carlson. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, and congratulations, Thank you. Uh, city council members and members of the community. Um, I'm here at, um, as my pleasure to present tonight on behalf of the Arts Council, Arts Commission, our first artist, resident artist, to display their artwork in the chamber. I'd like to introduce to you Claire Carlson. Claire? Uh, she's here with her husband, Rustin, and her mom, Margie. And I'd like for Claire just to give you just a brief background about herself and her artwork. OK. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for this opportunity. It's a really big honor for me. I'd like to thank the city council and the mayor um, and the art commission for nominating me for this. Um, I'm a former student of the Art Institute in Kansas City and um, some of these pieces that I've done uh, are inspired from the work that I did while there. Um, I have pieces from near and far as you'll see, um, some as far away as Florida and some right here in Raymore. So I'm proud to have some pieces that, uh, that represent Raymore a little bit. You may have to look <laughs> a little bit to- They're beautiful. We've, I think many of us have walked around and looked at them. They're very nice. Thank you. Thank you Thank for you. being here. Thank you, I appreciate here. that. So um, yeah, feel free to take a look around and Thank you okay. very right. much. I'm well, honored. Thank you. Right. As I said, this uh, is the first of our quarterly exhibits to be in the chambers. We look forward to many fine artists in the future. And without the support of the city council and the former mayor and now Mr. Mayor, um, we couldn't have gone forward with this project. Um, so thank you. And I just want to let you know that we're, the Art Commission is hard at work. We're in the throes of our summer scene on June 11th, working with the committee to put that on. We also have our new <coughs> pop-up art project, which is called Relax in Raymore. If you've seen that on the website, the big Adirondack chair event that's going on throughout the city. And we are meeting tomorrow night to strategize about our future. There's lots of things that we'll be doing lots of um, activities that we'll look forward to as the city now has the possibilities and the potential for new venues, which we're very excited about. We the amphitheater, too. the city annex, and the new community center. So as the Arts Commission, we are just thrilled to death and just looking forward to doing a lot of hard work. So thank you. Thank you, you Sharon. Thank you. 
Uh, next item on the agenda is personal appearances. I don't have any listed on the um, agenda tonight. Um, there is an opportunity at the end of the meeting for uh, citizen input. So the next item on the agenda is staff reports. Mr. Fearborn. Thank you, Your Honor. I would ask Mr. Cataret to make the report for community development. Thank you. Uh, a couple items this evening. First, just want to talk about uh, a couple upcoming meetings uh, that uh, you may be interested in. Uh, on April 19th, uh, next uh, Tuesday night, a week from tomorrow, uh, the Board of Adjustment will meet at 6 o'clock p.m. Uh, the Board has a request for a uh, variance to a property that's a Lamora Estates. It's one of the lots that actually backs up to the creek. And uh, because of the creek and, and the floodplain that happens to be on this property, uh, the property owner is requesting to modify a setback so they can uh, get a new structure to fit on the lot. Then at 7 o'clock that e evening will be our Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. Uh, they have a public hearing scheduled for the annual review of the growth management plan, and then they'll consider a, a final plat for Edgewater at Creek Moore's uh, fifth phase. Uh, so very active construction activity in Creek Moore. In fact, in May, the Planning Commission will be considering the uh, third plat for the High Point at Creek Moore development, which is uh, close to the clubhouse. And there's also um, will be a proposal for in the Edgewater second subdivision. We have a, a um, kind of an outlier lot. It's one of the lots that have been passed over for many, many years in, in that subdivision. And there's an individual interested in trying to fit a home in that lot, but may need some, uh, some uh, a request for a waiver on a, on a stormwater easement. So there'll be some discussion of that. You'll see that come before you uh, sometime probably in May. Uh, regarding status of commercial projects, uh, quite a bit of activity going on as far as renovations. Uh, you've heard about the Big Biscuit and Rainbow Galleria. Big Daddy's uh, Donuts should be opening sometime soon. Uh, Mexican Viego Restaurant in Willowwind, progressing very nicely, probably about a month away from getting that project completed. And then the, um, many of you are familiar with the old Casey's, which is next to Smith Hardware. It's been vacant for many, many years. The property was recently purchased. It'll be a, uh, a beauty salon going in, in that structure, so that'll be a, a good new addition to that part of our community. And then lastly, uh, another property uh, that's, that fell on hard times, it's a, it's a home in, in Silver Lake, many of you may be familiar with, 107 Johnston Drive, there at Rainbow Circle in, in Johnston. It's been vacant about a year, it's been a, a structure that we unfortunately had to post uh, uh, to not be occupied until some repairs were made, but the property has been purchased um, by an individual that is going to do quite a bit of investment on the property, and uh, you'll probably start seeing clean up, if not tomorrow, certainly be this week. Uh, so they've been working with our code enforcement officer and in a schedule and a plan on, on getting in there and re remediating that property. So it's very good news for that, for that neighborhood. So we were pleased to hear that and uh, look forward to that structure being, you know, uh, lived it again. Um, that concludes staff report at this time. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? Anybody? Mr. Fearborn? Mr. Kellogg, did you have a question? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Jim. I would ask that Mr. Mustine make a report for the Parks and Recreation Department. Oh, this better be good. <laughs> Welcome, sir. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I've been giving Nathan a hard time. I will say it has been a great week to be in Parks and Recreation, so thank you to all, all those who came out and voted. I have submitted a written report, and uh, as usual, I'm very thorough with that. A couple things I want to say is thank you to the Public Works Department for uh, providing uh, some signs for Moon Valley Park, uh, some wayfinding signs for that, so uh, really appreciate that. A couple things uh, coming up is our touch a truck event that's coming on april 23rd uh, since we last spoke uh, we've held two special events our arbor day foundation uh, arbor day event where we planted a tree at the new upcoming arboretum at memorial park and then our easter festival but a couple things outside of my written report i'd like to uh comment on and a walk with the dog Didn't that yes happen? we did jog with your dog too man we've been busy sorry yes, you have been and losing it. We had a dog with your dog as well. We also, uh, my staff, my, uh, my two uh, superintendents and I have been working with Mr. Fearborn on uh, some business plans for some of the new facilities that you guys have graciously uh, built for us and then now that the residents have voted 
and uh, we look to be presenting plans with how we want to market them and, and program those things. So we look to have that coming to you in the next several months. Uh, something else that we are looking forward to is Johnston Lake at Hawk Ridge Park. We've, as part of our CAPS agreement with Missouri Department of Conservation, we will begin a summer-long program of stocking Johnston Lake with uh, catfish. So over five to six times throughout the summer, they'll come out with one pound catfish that they'll be part of their, uh, their program as far as stocking urban lakes. Our baseball project that you know is going on, we, we continue to have favorable weather. So we are still two weeks ahead of schedule on that, that uh, project. Look to be at least two weeks ahead before our first game starts. So timing is just really working. The project's going well, so we couldn't have asked for anything better. And then in uh, addition to that, our baseball numbers are up 20, 20 kids from where we were this time last year. So as we see growth and we continue to improve our programs and our facilities, we see, <coughs> see the kids in the, in the uh, community responding to that. I'm not done. I got a lot more to go here. Uh, soccer. Um, we're going to do an in-house project at our soccer complex. My staff and I are going to install some irrigation. We're going to trench in some water lines and tie in and irrigate those fields. So we should see a significant difference in the, uh, the, the playability of them, just the look, everything, being able to manage that turf and everything. So this time next year, you should see a significant difference in the way those fields look. With that being said, a comparison of season to season, our rec teams have grown 11 teams from last spring season. So we continue to see growth in soccer, not to mention our Raymore United soccer club that's coming up. This uh, June, you'll start seeing as the rec season comes closer to an end, we'll really be advertising our, our camps, our clinics, our tryouts for Raymore United soccer club, seeing some stuff out at rec park with that. So keep an eye on that. And a couple more things is the uh, program guide and Raymore review will be coming out in around the first week of May. In addition to what we currently do provide uh, special events programs and stuff, we have seven brand new things coming up over the course of this summer and they're pretty exciting. Uh, for those kids who are into Legos, we have a Lego camp coming uh, hosted by Lego Corporation. They'll be here. We have an archery class coming where we, um, one of my staff members, Jerry Keith, is now a certified archery instructor. So we'll be offering a series of outdoor classes. Um, we're working with the Ray Peck Foundation, going to host a 5K run on May 6th. One thing that I'm really excited about, I challenged my staff last year when I got here, was to uh, challenge courses are very popular with the adults, uh, obstacle courses. And uh, in August, we will be hosting a challenge obstacle course for kids at Hawk Ridge Park. So I'm really excited about that. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, we also are en enhancing our movies in the park, where we used to do a fall and a spring. And this year, we're just going to do a summer series of movies in the park, and each one will have a different theme set with them. So we got a lot of stuff coming up. We've been very busy, and we are very thankful for what the residents have said about us, what they expect out of us through the strategic plan. And then they, they backed it up last Tuesday when they voted for our bond issue. So we're very thankful, and we hope to make them proud. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. How's that Raymore United Nitro doing? We we are undefeated. Oh, okay. Currently. Okay. We're on we're on the bye week, and we will be host and we will be having some team photos this week, so we can push that out there and let some folks see that. So. Is he supposed to buy you dinner now? <laughs> <laughs> I think they both should buy me dinner. Is what I think. <laughs> Make that motion. <laughs> <laughs> Can we make that official? <laughs> okay, thank you, Nate. Thank you. Anything, anybody else? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mustine. I would ask Chief Zimmerman to make a report for the police department and emergency management. Thank you, Mr. Pureborn. Um, I, I am going to talk for just a few minutes about uh, dispatch um, because in honor of National Telecommunications Week, uh, it seemed appropriate. Uh, but first I want to give a shout out to Starleth McAdams, who's our supervisor um, here, and uh, how she got everybody to line up in order of height was, was pretty, <laughs> pretty was amazing. Pretty um, 
Uh, yeah, I th I th they had to have been practicing in advance of that. I, that's the only thing that I can figure. And her son Jacob, who is very excited to be here at a city council meeting. So, um, as I said, it's it's appropriate to talk about uh, our dispatchers and what an outstanding job they do. Um, you know, based on National Telecommunicators Week. Um, I started my career as a dispatcher in Kansas City uh, in 1979. I hate to fess up what year I actually started. <laughs> some some of you weren't born yet uh, when I started my career, but. Uh, um, that's why dispatchers have a special place in my heart. Uh, it's, it's a hard job, but it's a very rewarding job. Um, <clears throat> and I have to tell you that things have changed significantly since I started my career low those many years ago. Uh, we wrote those calls that came in. We were the dispatchers and the, uh, and the uh, call takers as well, much like our folks are here in Raymore. Um, before, that was even before 911 ever existed. And we wrote those cards on, or those calls on IBM cards. and. Uh, um, we were all in one room, and, uh, and I was working the night that the Hyatt Regency collapsed. Um, so um, what these dispatchers do is, is nothing short of amazing, but um, I have to tell you that things have really changed down there, and, and I will encourage you at some point in time to come and visit those dispatchers and see what they do, um, because the technology ha has made old dinosaurs like me unable to go in there and fill a shift uh, for those dispatchers because of the consoles and the mapping and the GPS and all of the things that that they now do. Um, our dispatchers are even unique from other public safety answering points uh, all across the country because they not only dispatch for police department, uh, two police departments, Raymore and Peculiar, uh, they also dispatch for South Metro Fire, which means that our dispatchers have to have special training uh, in emergency medical dispatch. Um, so when you think about you know, what those individuals um, are doing when they're talking to a citizen who's calling them um, in crisis, someone in their family is, is very injured or very ill and needs that medical support, they're providing that important and critical information to those individuals um, until the ambulance gets there. You know, many times providing that um, information that will help sustain that person's life until an ambulance can arrive. So um, they even have um, training above and beyond what you see at a number of PSAPs uh, across the country. Um, we have eight full-time dispatcher positions, although we're short right now. Um, we are um, trying to hire to fill those uh, positions because the folks that you saw up here, um, we have to staff 24 hours a day. So it's, it's not possible just to let people have days off and things like that when we're short-handed. Uh, and of course, our dispatch supervisor, as I mentioned, they have to be EMD certified and that happens every single year. Um, and uh, they also have to have 24 CEUs um, each and every year as well. Um, but after hours, you know, besides dispatching for Peculiar and Raymore and South Metro Fire, they are also the after hours response line for things like Public Works, Parks and Recreation, uh, and, and all the other folks who are attempting to reach City Hall when um, all the rest of us are at home in bed. They have six 911 calls and seven non-emergency calls, and uh, they work those 12-hour shifts um, that I just mentioned. Um, and I will tell you, I'll just give you a couple of really quick stats, thanks to Starleth, um, that uh, in 2015, they responded to or handled 9,836 911 calls and 41,544 <coughs> administrative calls. So, you know, in the neighborhood of, of over 50,000 calls that are handled by, you know, our folks each and every day uh, that they're there. And so, uh, which is up 15% in wireless calls and 9% in, in hardline calls from the previous year. So uh, they do an amazing job. And if you'll indulge me for just a moment, uh, I'm going to read you a quote of, uh, from one of our citizens that was posted on Facebook about National Telecommunicators Week and particularly our dispatchers here in Raymore. I don't think there's anything inappropriate in here. <laughs> there's no, no obscenity, hopefully, as I read this. Um, no one can have more respect and admiration than I for these amazing, dedicated, talented, and patient people. God bless you one and all for tolerating verbal abuse, dealing compassionately with occasional innate stupidity, and calming, <coughs> and calming doing your job without allowing personal prejudice or resentment to become involved. Thank you for truly caring for both the callers and the responders. Without you, one would likely not survive and the other would likely not be successful. And I couldn't have said it better myself. Um, that's from a citizen here in Raymore. So um, I will take any questions that you all have about these amazing folks. Mr. Holman? Uh, more a comment, Chief. Great presentation. 
Uh, I wanted to take a moment to personally thank you. I was going to save it for the end, but uh, since you're here, I think it's more appropriate. You, you and your department's response and rapid investigation this past week on the robbery suspect was nothing short of amazing. Um, I believe uh, within an hour you had a suspect developed and an arrest made within about 24. We certainly heard loud and clear during the community conversations that our police department and the safety of our citizens were of paramount importance to everyone here, all 20,000 plus people. And you demonstrated the true professionalism and quality that our police department carries on their shoulders and to the citizens of Raymore. Great work, thank you. Thank you, sir. Here, here. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a quick question, Chief. So you mentioned all of the phone calls that your dispatchers get. <laughs> um, any information about how much traffic they handle on the radio between officers, between fire department and dispatch because not only are they responsible for taking those <laughs> phone calls but they also manage all that radio traffic between officers between emergency personnel and so add that on top of all those phone calls any numbers for that I wouldn't the radio and, very and truly <laughs> um, as I had mentioned you know back in the olden days um, you know when when I was a dispatcher um, when you were answering the phone and you were also dispatching those those calls that's what our folks do every single day in Kansas City what they did was you know when 911 came along they separated those duties so the dispatchers just dispatched and the call takers just took the phone calls and uh, um, you know we're able to you know divide those duties in half um, our folks don't have that luxury obviously so it prob probably easily that many um, starlet is probably being being generous it's probably a lot more air traffic I know I hear the radio at our house so I know you <laughs> <laughs> I know Absolutely. it's pretty messed up and just just to finish that off um, thank you from the bottom of my heart and all of the first responders in the city and their families because we all know that it's you guys that keep keep our guys safe so thank you thanks chief anyone else mr. Stevens having served on both sides of that I would much prefer being a dispatcher than a police officer you, you don't get the uh, uh, guff in person <laughs> a lot of guff much, over the phone much, though. much safer <laughs> <laughs> guff nonetheless <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yes. anybody else Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Mr. Irwin. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, sir. Uh, just the schedule for next Monday night's work session, as we always give it to the council a little ahead of time. Uh, the first item on the agenda at this time is to get down to uh, the real brass tacks of the bond schedule. I know you all have seen it, and we've kind of Given, given you the general areas, but uh, Mr. Crass will be prepared to really, and, and all of staff will be prepared to dig in and kind of talk to you about months and dates and how the bond money is going to flow. We, we did meet, uh, as a matter of fact, we met last Wednesday and last Thursday with our bond council and uh, the, our, our outside finance advisor, Mr. Todd Goffey. Um, I would much prefer to be out ahead, uh, as you can imagine, um, with municipal elections just having passed, there are a number of uh, cities and counties and local municipalities who are going to be floating bond issues. We want to be out in front of that to the extent that we can. We don't want to be in a flooded market of bond issues. Even though people would still bid on them, I, I just can't help but think that we'll get a little bit competition uh, breeds better rates so want to be out in front of it uh, they have uh, worked with us very well and it appears that we will be going out for sale on the Monday of the second May council meeting so once again just like in the past we'll pa pass a parameters ordinance with you all and then the day of the second reading we'll actually be selling the bonds bonds will be the, the Funds will be available June 1, and Mike already has plans on how he's going to spend them. So we're, we're moving as rapidly as we can on these projects. So that'll be our first item. Um, second item on the agenda is the United States Supreme Court has just passed a new language associated with political signs. 
and in consideration of the fact that we're going to have to change some of our code to come into compliance with that language and an interesting uh, political season relative to signs that has just passed that's still in our memory we thought it would be a good time to come to the council and review our sign ordinance for the changes that we have to put in because of the Supreme Court as well as get any input from the council that you may have relative to political signs last item is to speak with the council about the removal of the Ryan's access on 58 highway and I'll just let that stand you all know the history of it but we want to get some input from you before we actually move forward with that project okay. that concludes staff reports sir we'll take any okay. questions all right any questions mr. Stevens do you have any idea who normally buys your bonds and how much they pay as an investor that's the reason I'm asking uh, you know what they're getting because of the the ticket price which is the in, you know they, they are paying the premium that comes with the interest rate that they are getting okay anyone else okay next item on the agenda is our consent agenda uh, tonight we have three items on the consent agenda uh, first item is City Council minutes for March 28th second item is a 2015 street preservation final acceptance and item C is the adopt a street Hubach Hill from J Highway to South Madison Street. Is there a motion? Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve the consent agenda to include items A, City Council minutes for March 28, 2016, item B for the 2015 street preservation final acceptance, and C, the adopt a street program for Hubach Hill from J Highway to South Madison Street. Second. Motion's been made uh, and seconded. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as I was not present for the council meeting that those minutes are, or those minutes that are in the consent agenda, I would ask at this time that the minutes be separated out from the rest of the consent agenda as I intend to abstain on the vote. Okay, is that a motion to amend? Point of order, Mr. Mayor. Typically, historically, that didn't require a second. It was always granted by the chair. It's the chair's prerogative, I believe. We can ask the parliamentary. Is that right? Uh, okay. Okay, it's an automatic change on that. So we'll be voting on items uh, B and C of the consent agenda. Okay, any discussion? All those in favor of the motion? Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Um, do we want to uh, address item A now? Okay, is there a motion to approve? Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve item A. Is there a second? Motion been made and seconded to approve item A of the consent agenda. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion? Any no's? Any abstentions? Oh, we have one abstention. Okay. As stated before, due to the fact I was not present at the meeting, sir. Great. Thank you. All righty. Next item on the agenda is our, uh, we now move into unfinished business. Um, Kevin, my screen's not moving again. These bar right here. These bar. Yeah. This bar? Yep, this bar right here. Gotcha. Scroll down. Yeah. Here we are right here. 10 4. All right, I got it now. <laughs> We're moving there. Hold on, folks. Click New right guy. Here. Click right here. There you go. There we go. Okay. All right. Um, under the uh, unfinished business, our first item is Bill 3149. Uh, Jeannie, could you read that by title only, please? The second reading of Bill 3149 by title only, an ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with Superior Bowen Asphalt Company, LLC, for the mill and overlay portion of the 2016 Street Preservation Project, City Project Number 237-201, in the amount of $827,041.16, and authorizing the city manager to approve change orders within established budget constraints. Um, and that was the uh, bill 3149 is there a motion mr. mayor move that we approve bill 3149 for the award of contract for the fiscal year 2016 street preservation mill and overlay second motion's been made and seconded is there any discussion all those in favor of the motion any opposed Item passes unanimously. Thank you. 
Next item on the agenda is Bill 3154. Ms. Warner, could you read that by title only, please? The second reading of Bill 3154 by title only, an ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, approving and authorizing the mayor to enter into a guaranteed pricing contract with Little Sports Shop to provide screen printing and embroidery services. Is there a motion? Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 3154 for an award of contract for screen printing and embroidery services. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to approve the award of contract for screen printing and embroidery services. All those in favor of the motion? Any opposed? Item passes unanimously. Next item on the agenda is award of contract for beverage vending, bill number 3157. Ms. Warner. The second reading of Bill 3157 by title only, an ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, approving and authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with Pepsi Beverages Company. Is there a motion? Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 3157 for an award of contract for beverage vending. Second. The motion's been made and seconded to approve Bill 3157. All those in favor, is there any discussion? Sorry. All those in favor of the motion? Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Uh, now we're in a, to new business. Um, first item under new business is uh, the uh, declaration of the election results, but we've already done that, haven't we? Or do we have to no, do no, the GO bond, the bond issue? Okay. Yeah. That's bill number 3160. Ms. Werner, could you read that by title only, please? The first reading. The first reading of Bill 3160 by title only, an ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, declaring the results of the April 5, 2016, general obligation bond issue election questions. Is there a motion? Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 3160. Staff. Oh, actually, I apologize, Mr. Point of order, we do require staff oh, report. Oh, okay. All right. Sorry, Mr. Fearborn. I wasn't looking up. I'm sure you were giving me the eyeball there. Sir, we're cooking along. All right. <laughs> I'm loving it. <clears throat> I would ask Ms. Warner to make a staff report. There's two questions on the April 5th Are there any questions? Okay. Entertain a motion. Okay. Well, now we'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 3160 for declaring the election results for the April 5th, 2016 uh, general obligation bond vote. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve first reading of Bill 3160. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Uh, next item is the uh, Johnson Drive Yard Restoration Bill number 3159. Could you read that? The first reading of Bill 3159 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, authorizing the mayor to enter into a supplemental agreement with Wilch Silt Fence and Erosion Control, LLC, for the Johnston Drive Yard Restoration Project in the amount of $30,000 and authorizing the city manager to approve change orders within established budget constraints. Okay, is there a staff report? Thank you, sir. I call on Mr. Crass. Thank you, Mr. Fearborn, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Um, last, last year we had two pretty extensive construction projects within the Silver Lake neighborhood. We had a water line replacement project and then the reconstruction of Johnson Drive. Uh, this, pro this contract involves the restoration of those yards that were disturbed by uh, both projects. Um, as contractors like to do, they like to point fingers at each other when settlements occur in yards, etc. We felt it was better at this time to uh, take control of the restoration for, the, for that work and uh, work with our on-call erosion control contractor to restore the yards. They will be uh, regrading the yards, filling in low spots, tilling up additional and adding additional topsoil as necessary, uh, placing sod and then watering the sod for a period of, of three weeks to make sure it's well established. So um, we do recommend award of this uh, supplemental agreement with them. And if I could dovetail off of Mr. Grass's uh, statement, uh, the council may remember that when we completed the uh, Madison Road project at Lucy Webb, a couple of years ago, 
it was determined that it might be a very good time to approve uh, people who actually do yard work rather than having people who do concrete work and asphalt work to do yard restoration. They might be a little bit better at it. And the council graciously approved that. And so this is an extension of that program for this very, very large project. That concludes staff report, sir. Thank you. Any questions? Anybody? Is there a motion? Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 3159 for the Johnston Drive Yard Restoration Project. Second. second. The motion's been made and seconded to approve Bill 3159. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion? Oh, Mr. Keller, I'm sorry. Hold on. I'm kind of offended by the, the verbiage yard restoration. I'm kind of particular. I think it should be lawn, but I'm just pulling nose hairs right now. Anything else? Okay. All those in favor of the motion? Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. That concludes new business. Uh, next item on the agenda is public comments. If you'd like to address the council, anyone can step to the podium. Please identify yourself for the record. Keep your comments to a maximum of five minutes. Anyone like to? No one? Okay. Anyone? All right. We'll move on to Mayor Council communication. I'm going to keep this simple. I'm going to start on the end. Ms. Abdelgawad. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, let's see. I have, I have a little bit of a list. Um, starting, I already kind of touched on it, but I just want to go back one more time and um, say thank you to all of our dispatchers from the bottom of my heart and um, speaking for all of the other families of our first responders in Raymore and also Peculiar that they dispatch for. They do really important work and um, often don't get the recognition that they deserve. And I know my husband, we weren't quite the same age as Chief, but um, <laughs> he started as a dispatcher too. So I know um, I spent many hours in dispatch with him when he was dispatching before he became an officer. And I know that it's, it's a thankless job. It's very, very, very stressful sometimes, and the work they do is important. So I just want to give another shout out to our dispatchers. They're awesome, and um, I and I know the other families really appreciate them, as well as the officers and firefighters. And um, Also, a big shout out to our Arts Commission. I think the things that they're doing are great. It's nice to come in here every quarter now and see some new artwork, some color on our walls. Um, I really enjoyed looking at the photographs in here and would highly encourage anyone in the public to come in and take a peek. The things that they're planning with summer scene on June 11th and then the Relax in Raymore that's, that's happening. Um, so, so excited to see what's happening with our Arts Commission. Um, and also, it was very exciting to hear Mr. Mustine talk about all the great things going on with Parks and Rec. Um, too, many, too many to list, but the whole time he was talking, I think I was smiling and nodding. It's, it's so awesome to see the great things he's brought to our Parks Department. Um, and of course, a huge thank you to the, the citizens of Raymore for voting for that bond issue. Of course, for electing me again um, as well, but for voting for the bond issues, the things that those are going to be able to bring to our city are going to be so incredible and, and hopefully will touch the lives of, of everyone who voted for them. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Holman. Thank you, sir. Um, for my esteemed colleague in uh, Council member to the north, Mr. Barber, the heavyweight champions are 4-0 going into the bye week. We'll be back on the pitch Sunday afternoon, hopefully to go 5-0. Thank you for recognizing them. By the way, the comment about buying dinner, uh, we're doing a photo shoot out at the park on Wednesday. Mr. Eek, you'll be there. Hot dogs and chips for everybody. I'm already paid for it, so show up if you want to eat. Congratulations to all the uh, returning council members that faced re-elections, Mr. Stevens. Uh, Councilmember Moorhead and Ms. Abdelgawad. To my left, um, not quite as strenuous when you don't have an opponent, but you still got to put a little heart into it. Uh, Mayor Turnbow, welcome to our group. Uh, you will find no finer around. And uh, the best advice I can give is when you step into a uh, highly tuned performance automobile, you should put on your seatbelt, sir. You are in for a ride. Welcome aboard. Uh, the last thing I would have would be thank you to uh, 
the citizens of Raymore for their great wisdom uh, and vision to invest in the city's future. I've talked many times about, uh, I believe we're on the precipice of a change, uh, our, our renaissance period, if you will, uh, a third and very distinctive phase in the history of Raymore, not seen since the days of the railroad and uh, our, uh, our uh, I guess identity is a farm town and small town from some years ago. That is rapidly changing as evidenced by uh, a number of things, including the passage of the bond issue. Um, much more to come. It's, it's begun and it's unfolding very rapidly. I've said it before, but I can't thank staff enough for this. Uh, we have a role to play in this, certainly, but you'll notice uh, they're the ones that, that get the ball rolling. We may put the big 500-pound ball in front of them, but they're the ones that push it down the road. And uh, the speed at which they're able to do things really still amazes me. Mr. Fearborn, please pass that on to your staff uh, throughout the entire process. They tackled a number of projects, major projects, over the past couple of months, including both the community conversation and literally overnight turned it on to the, the bond project, which was successful. Thank you, sir. And that's all I have. Thank you. Mr. Moorhead. Wow, all the good stuff's already gone. Um, no, I, I will reiterate, Mr. Mayor, welcome to have you aboard. Thank you. I'm excited to have you here. Um, I also have to resonate comments for all the city staff. Um, it, 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 I, I re, am respectfully humbled on uh, last Tuesday to stand outside here at City Hall, and I'm reminded uh, how important it is, the role that I play for my ward and how I appreciate being here. And it is a wonderful experience to be up here and to do the things that we do and work with these people. So I have to thank the citizens, whether we have an opponent or not, and I agree, it doesn't matter. We have to earn our vote, we have to earn your trust and support, and I hope that we can continue to do that. Um, but I have to point out, when I'm standing outside uh, supporting the two bond issues, it, it's it's very awkward feeling because citizens were coming up to me and thanking me for all my hard work and I realized the staff built an entire car all I did was slap the license plate on at the end but I'm getting all the credit and I had to realize I had to try to try to keep that in perspective that um, for months and months they did so much and we got to take so much credit for that and I'll, I'll never get to all the staff members uh, that contributed to that. And uh, the, the resonance of the, the strength of the vote spoke very loudly to that. And I do have to say, we all really respect the fact that that Tuesday was just throwing out the first pitch. Now we have to do it. And, you know, I'm really excited and really uh, supportive of our park board and our public works department, which are the two that'll really kind of deal with the majority of that and feeling and sensing Mr. Mustaine's uh, optimism and enthusiasm was a wonderful start. Um, always have to give a special praise to our police dispatchers. Um, you know, that I, I, as an attorney, I deal with different aspects of law and have dealt with law enforcement. and. The things that the dispatchers do have to do really go unnoticed. Citizens always see the police cars driving around and wonder whether they're speeding or their tags are good, but um, the dispatchers do so much and really are that front line, and, and I'm always appreciative of them. Um, Ms. Carlson's work has already amazingly impressed me. Um, it's wonderful to see visions out of other people's eyes, and uh, so I welcome anybody who can come up and take a look at that, and I, I'm, I'm very excited for that. Um, it was very moving to hear Mr. Gable and Mr. Duncan um, on the donation of uh, organ donation. I was, that was on the news earlier today. I was listening to some um, speeches on that, and that's a very important issue, so I'm glad we honored that. Um, I got kind of an early birthday present today from staff. Um, I live at just a few houses down from 107 Johnston Drive and am barraged by uh, citizen complaints. Hearing that there's going to be a new owner is like getting a wonderful gift. So thank you, Mr. Cataret, for sharing that information. My wife and I are uh, overjoyed by that. And my final comment will be um, a compliment to uh, Councilman Kellogg. I have to use the phrase, I'm gonna plagiarize you here, pulling nose hairs. So <laughs> I just, I, that caught me. So I'm gonna to try to use that at least twice the rest of this week. That was a great comment. So, but I, to finish off, at least sincerely, 
thank all I thank all of you for the opportunity to represent you. Thank you, Mr. Kellogg. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Welcome. Congratulations. Look forward to working with you. Uh, I as well. It, it definitely going to be a real quick learning experience <laughs> for you. You know, when he sits up here and he, and he, and he jokes, you know, and I, 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 I remember working with Chris way back when I was a new council member. You know, he uh, put his arm around me one night and uh, he says, he says, uh, Councilman Kellogg, he says, I don't think it's really that big of a deal for myself. He said, but I can't guarantee you that my officers won't write you a ticket for not having a front plate on your car. <laughs> <laughs> I caught the hint and I went and I bought a, <laughs> bought a license plate holder that next week, I, but I had to order it. But anyway, it's, it, it's a pleasure to have you up here, Mr. Mayor, and uh, welcome. Uh, I want to say uh, the, the proclamation you gave tonight for the dispatchers is more than appropriate. Um, their work is extremely important to the to everybody in the community, not just our community, but many others. Uh, I before I got divorced, my my um, former wife was a dispatcher. Even she was also a TTD dispatcher, also and. Uh, the uh, level of multitasking that she could do just amazed me and it, it, it kind of irritated me because I felt incompetent around her many, many times. But um, the stories that she used to tell uh, when she was a dispatcher were just amazing. Um, I also remember going through the policemen's or the police citizens police academy uh, before I became on the council. And one of the um, sessions we had one of the nights was um, listening to some 911 calls and Alan Edmonds was there that night also. He was in the class that I was in and uh, several others, uh, Paula Weba, uh, Annie Settles, you probably remember that. And I, you know, I, I'll never forget that call of that, that, that little, little child calling dispatch. And, and, you know, I remember Alan writing the article in the paper, there was not a dry eye in the, in the room and it was very true. You know, that's what our dispatchers go through, you know. Um, yes, they do have very good training, and thank God they do, and, and thank everybody up here on this dais for making sure that, that they do have that training. Um, they, it, it serves our community that much better. So anyway, um, the other thing that I was going to say was um, I, I can't remember. So I've said enough. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Stevens. No comments tonight. Okay. Mr. Burke. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, wanted to say that I enjoyed um, standing in front of City Hall last week and giving out information about the bonds. Um, I, I really enjoyed reconnecting with people that I hadn't seen since last spring and then some that I hadn't seen since the Raymore, uh, reimagined Raymore conversations. But it, it, was, uh, it was really kind of nice to be out there and I, I actually called in and uh, asked if, if I could have a sign that says I'm not trying to get you to vote for a person I'm getting I want you to vote for something that's going to be cool for you um, and I'm really excited that the citizens agreed with the work that the staff had done because I really think there's going to be a lot of exciting things uh, happening in the next year also wanted to say that uh, I really liked the way that um, the inter interchange between Mayor Turnbow and Mayor Kirkhoff, the smiles between them, and really that's kind of what we do here in this country. We have elections and we have exchanges of, of power and, and uh, people smile and, and move on and, and uh, that's the way it's supposed to be. So that was another thing that my mother would, would remember. My mother was a history teacher. She would, she would say, well, that's, that's the way it's supposed to be. It's not supposed to be in hard feelings. People go out and they do their thing and and I really uh, enjoyed the, the thank you signs on your on your uh, vote your, on your uh, election signs. Thank you. And I liked people at school mention that they liked the thank you on there. So thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Barber. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> I think you already know what I think about you. Um, I would like to say something about Mayor Kirchhoff. Um, you know, he served our community for four years. Uh, he's been in public service for longer than that. 
And I think any time that you serve, you want to leave what you, the city in a little better shape that you found it. And I can honestly say that he did that. Uh, the city is in better shape. Not that it was in bad shape, uh, but it's in better shape than the way he found it. I also want to recognize my colleagues that ran for re-election. Um, I respect you for that. As a citizen of Raymore, um, I really appreciate what you do and the time. And as a colleague, uh, I really do appreciate each and every one of you. I'm just finishing my, I guess you could say my rookie year. Um, I guess I'm not a rookie anymore. And I thank each and every one of you for helping me through, uh, I can remember my first meeting uh, up here. And um, uh, it, it was interesting for sure. Went very fast. Um, I want to recognize uh, my daughters in the audience tonight, Katie. Uh, she's kind of my sidekick. And, um, uh, you know, she's one of the reasons that I do this. And uh, I appreciate, her, appreciate uh, her coming tonight. I would also like to thank the people of Raymore. I, you know, they gave us a plan, and then they um, gave, gave us the way to, to make the plan happen. And uh, all we've got to do is make it happen. So we've got, a, we, we've got the road kind of laid out ahead of us as a council and staff, and I trust and I know that we'll get it done. And uh, we're going to have a lot of happy people in Raymore. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bowden. Ms. Hubach. Well, several weeks ago, the citizens attended the strategic plan uh, meetings, and they said they wanted an identifiable downtown with a gathering place. But nobody said where they wanted that downtown to be, so I don't know whether they're just talking about a concept or whether they're talking about a really and truly livable place. But I'm as making the assumption that they're wanting a, a livable place. So I have come up with some ideas that I want to share with the council in the next uh, few weeks and months. And if anybody that's listening to us tonight has any ideas, why well, forward them on to me because I will incorporate whatever it is the people have to say as well as my own ideas on that. So, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day, but you have to get started somewhere, and the best way to get started is to determine where the location is going to be. So I look forward to working with all of you on doing that. Let's get busy. Thank you, Mrs. Chubach. Well, for my first uh, comments tonight, uh, there are several. Um, first off, I'd like to, to thank uh, Claire for the, the wonderful art exhibits. I, uh, it, it is uh, beautiful to see those in the room here and, and then watch them change out over a period of time. Um, the Arts Commission is something that I want to uh, get a little closer to myself and understand it and, and be able to assist. Um, and then the dispatchers uh, being recognized, our, our public safety telecommunicators is much more appropriate than just calling them dispatchers because they, they really are the, the front line for law enforcement. Um, in my 36 years as in that business, um, I was actually had the opportunity, probably about the same time the chief did, to dispatch. When I was in Raytown, they allowed us to, as law enforcement, uh, to come in from time to time and work in dispatch. And you really uh, uh, begin to appreciate what they have to do. And back then, uh, it was simpler, a simpler time. It was only police. Um, and now that we're into um, emergency medical dispatch, it hol holds a whole other level of complication to the position. And our people downstairs are trained uh, to handle that. And I would echo the chief's invite to go down and take a look. It's, it's pretty uh, uh, inspiring to see the, the level of work and training and skills that they use uh, to get our police officers and firefighters and EMS out there to assist the people in the community. And then again, thanks uh, to Ray Gable and Phil Duncan for coming up and providing us with the, uh, uh, the flag for uh, the recognition for the National Donate Life Month. That is an important issue. And then the, uh, the bonds themselves. Um, wow, did that say something huge for, for our community? 80% um, on one, 
almost 75% on the other approved those bond issues. Um, the, the community has spoken, and now we have to do the heavy lifting and, uh, and get the job done. And we've got a great team to do that with. They've been very uh, supportive this past week since the election, uh, trying to uh, make sure I was in my diapers appropriately and got changed and, uh, as it would need to be through this infancy. Um, but the, uh, I do appreciate the staff. Thank you so much. Uh, you guys are, are really awesome. And then finally, I want to thank the voters of Raymore. Um, uh, but before I do that, there's a man in the back of the room that put together, his name is Mike Eakey, who's our public information guy. He did a great job on designing everything that went along with the bond education. Michael, those were, I think, tantamount and the re main reason why this thing passed. Not only he had some good people out there talking, talking it up and educating the folks, Mr. Fearborn and Mr. Tapp and, and everybody else that had to speak on, on the issues, uh, but Mike, you, uh, you really helped uh, that thing go along. Thank you, I wanted to thank you personally for that because those bond issues are really going to make this community change. And now I want to get to the voters. Uh, many of you supporters are here in the room tonight. You know who you are. Thank you for your support. Um, I am excited about the opportunity to serve the community of Raymore. It's, uh, it is an exciting time. Uh, many up here on the, on the council uh, were quick to give me advice, and I appreciate that advice uh, as I began <coughs> to stub my toe along the way, but uh, they got me back on track um, so that I could be better educated and be able to serve the community as well. I, I, I am very humbled and proud to serve as mayor, and I do not take my responsibilities lightly. And thank you, okay? And now we have an opportunity to, for my first executive session, I guess we're going to move into executive session now. Mr. Mr. Mayor, motion? Mr. Mayor, I move that we move into executive session to discuss litigation matters as authorized by section 610.021 subsection one. Second. Yeah. Okay, motion's been made and seconded. Ms. Warner, could you please provide a roll call? Councilmember Abdelgawad? Yes. Councilmember Barber? Yes. Councilmember Burke? Yes. Councilmember Holman? Yes. Councilmember Hubach? Yes. Councilmember Kellogg? Yes. Councilmember Moorhead? Yes. Councilmember Stevens? Yes. And for your information, we'll now move into executive session. We will adjourn from executive session to come out here to adjourn this meeting and, and this meeting only. Okay? Thank you.